Hey friends, welcome to day 18 of Inktober 2018. Today's prompt is, I think these whiskers really suit my face, but I'm unsure about all this extra lace. And I'm using a very dry brush technique today, which as the technique implies is uh, when you grab a brush and you don't fully load it, uh, where well, you don't really you know, fully load the bristles with a lot of paint or ink. Uh, you really want to retain some of that scratchy brush texture. And I found that with ink, uh, it just works by using a, a very uh, beat up brush. <laughs> the one I'm using is a calligraphy brush. I actually got it from Daiso a long time ago. It's very inexpensive from Daiso. And uh, Oliver also loves this brush and he loves to chew on it. So a lot of the bristles are missing, which makes it even more scratchy. So that's fantastic. The one time I've been happy about him destroying something. Um, but I've just decided to go in and do a dry brush technique that I, uh, I did a lot last Inktober. And I just wanted to try it again for Daisy and see what kind of a result it would bring about. And I thought this would be a good prompt to try it for since lace can be very difficult to draw. It's very, very detailed and uh, it can be a very, very time consuming to draw. And so I thought if I did it with this black ink and kind of uh, drew it negatively and got a white gel pen and kind of put in all the details with that, I could eliminate the need for spending hours and hours and hours of drawing lace. So I thought this was a really good prompt to try the dry brush technique on, mostly out of necessity because I didn't have th like 13 hours to draw some lace. <laughs> it's uh, There's a lot of patterning going on in lace. Uh, so anyway, this is uh, something that I came up with. I'm really, really happy about it. I do go in with a Pentel color brush pigment pen, uh, a brush pen, just to go in and add the finer details in the face. I thought if I added the details of the face with this brush pen, with this uh, calligraphy brush, that they would be too big and there wouldn't be enough of a contrast between what was going up on her face and in the rest of the picture. I feel like it might all blend together and get very muddy. Uh, since this is, since when you're dry brushing, I guess, you're kind of putting in the, the big blocks of whatever make up the image uh, with, with your brush and uh, it can tend to start lo start looking like a lot of just random blots of ink if there's nothing to, if there's no contrast between the shapes and the lines and how thick some are and how thin some are. So I thought by having the face be done in a very petite brush pen uh, kind of a look would really help it stand out as the face. Otherwise it might have just looked like a bunch of ink blots and you'd have to really search for it. If this were a bigger piece, like if this were a bigger piece of paper and I was doing it on a much bigger scale, I think I'd still be able to achieve a lot of this with this uh, calligraphy brush. But since it is quite small, it becomes a lot harder harder to do these very abstract techniques on smaller pieces. I don't know, uh, honestly don't know how Ali Brown does it. She <laughs> manages to do very conservatively sized abstracts and I completely struggle with it. It's, it's almost like your mediums, well not even your mediums, but your tools have to be miniaturized to suit the specific dimensions of working smaller. Wow, excuse me for a second, my nose is like out of control right now. I am literally still falling apart. I've been trying to film the uh, the Patreon recap video. I'll be honest, I actually spent about 30 minutes this morning trying to film it and it just got away from me. I'm trying to be really clear and concise with a lot of what I say. I've got a whole page full of notes and uh, I think I'm gonna re-attempt it by just saying what I absolutely have to say going through the pros and cons list. I'll go on a couple of tangents in there and then leaving it at that because I feel like I did 30 minutes of talking before I even got to the pros and cons list. And um, it's, it's a lot to unpack. I think where I really got held up and I really started to struggle was with uh, talking about uh, the, the financial aspect of Patreon. And the reason I did get tripped up there is because I know it's such a sore spot for people. I know, uh, I mean, I'm a very private person as well. I'm very uh, personal. I don't share, you know, the amount of money that I make or how much money I've got in savings. Like, I don't do that. I know it's a, a very taboo thing to talk about money. And so I don't. Uh, but as far as Patreon goes, it is kind of the reason that people join Patreon. It's a way for people that work in a creative field to support their livelihood whilst working in that creative field. Because most of these opportunities that we get as, as creators are freelance opportunities. They come and buy, uh, they come and go so quickly. <laughs> I clock the reference. Um, and it's, you know, whilst one, you know, great project a year could be very lucrative for you, you're going to have to take whatever earnings you, t you get from that project and really uh, finance your life and your endeavors 
throughout the year on that and try and uh, scrape by for the rest of the year. It's uh, the starving artist, you know, that's not a saying for no reason. <laughs> and, um, but we are so lucky in this day and age to have a lot of different uh, revenue streams as far as uh, being in a creative field, especially with social media. There's a lot of way to access some uh, passive income streams uh, like Amazon affiliate links, Amazon merch, Google AdSense money. Um, you know, I've obviously had my Etsy store. That's my main source of income. But Patreon really does provide uh, a pseudo salary for people. And so I, I found it really hard to mention that without going into uh, a bit of a, a long winded tangent on it. And I just don't want people to think that I'm just talking about it for the money, even though that is a very big aspect and probably the reason why most people join Patreon as it is. And I think it's coming from a bit of a, an insecurity I had from that, from uh, something that happened in Patreon uh, right in the middle there where uh, there. I'm just not even going to go into it, but uh, basically it was uh, it, it had to do with money and uh, my intentions with money, and it just got a little uh, personal for me. And so I t I don't want to share any of it because I don't want that issue to come back. <laughs> and I know in talking about money uh, so candidly, or you know, just so upfront about it, I know that it is going to rub people the wrong way. So I think I'm just going to. Uh, leave this video here and leave this voiceover as my- Are you right? No, go away. Do you need to be fighting now? That was Oliver. Just jumped on Bianca. Go away. So naughty. Um, I'm just, <laughs> I love that I'm like, I'm just gonna leave this evidence, this is here is evidence. Um, no, I just want this voiceover, I guess, to be proof that I am seriously struggling with the idea of talking about the, the financial aspect of Patreon. Um, just in case anyone thinks that I'm not, because I do feel like this video is going to come across a bit, um, I, I don't know, like a bit detached, because I, I don't want to put a lot of my personal feelings into it. I, I don't I don't think it's really going to help people to know that. We've talked about the personal feelings while we were on uh, Playtest Patreon, if people were involved in that, and I think, you know, it, it, a lot of it's just so obvious. A lot of it is like, oh, it's just a lot of work, and, you know, a lot of work is a lot of effort, so you get tired sometimes. Like, I don't feel like I need to go heavy in on that as to why people get tired and why, <laughs> like, uh, what the solutions are. I think I should just be a little bit more, you know, pro, con, pro, con. Here it is. Um, mention my apology as well for running my mouth. <laughs> um, but yeah, the money thing just really kind of trips me up because I know it's such a soft spot for a lot of people and having had that uh, particular incident uh, shape the way I felt about uh, Patreon for a hot minute, it just really gives me anxiety to think that I'm about to approach the same topic on the internet again. But uh, let's just pray that it is received well and that the video will just recap the experience and my thoughts on it. I guess it, it is all opinion based. People can take it with a grain of salt. I, I really hope there's no one out there that takes all of my opinions to heart. <laughs> um, because I have been known to change my opinion quite a few times. I, uh, I'm, I'm just so easily influenced. I don't know what it is. I could make an opinion based off of nothing but speculation. And uh, it is not a great way to be as a human being. I will get to the bottom of it before I die. Uh, but just, you know, truth be told, that is one of the things that I struggle with. So gets me into hot water sometimes, I guess. <laughs> anyway, I will uh, endeavor to go and... Uh, why is endeavor the word of the day? I feel like I've said it 50 times today. I'm going to go and try and film that again after I wrap up this voiceover and get this video onto YouTube. And we'll see. We'll see if I can stay on topic. <laughs> I hope I can. So, so it's also really stressful because I don't sit down and talk to camera that often. I feel like I get a little uncomfortable about it. Um, I can do little cutaway shots, but to sit down and do a full chat to a camera, it's like being on a, it's like if you're like on Oprah, but Oprah's not there. You know what I mean? You, it feels so weird talking about a lot of stuff that you have decided to talk about and you are prompting yourself to talk about it. It just seems so odd. <laughs> Um, it's, I don't know, has anyone out there done that? Like, if you're a, if you make videos for YouTube, how do you find sitting down in front of the camera and just speaking to it? Um, I, I still feel some type of way about it. I feel like I'd be better if there was a script and it was someone else's video and I didn't, it, you know, it wasn't really me. But I always think that people are sitting there and watching, because I know I have felt like this before too. When people sit there and do things and they're like, oh, that's so embarrassing. But they leave it in, I think, well, you edited it. Like... Why did you keep it in if you were so embarrassed? And 
then I start to think, oh, you're trying to be cute. And uh, <laughs> it just gets like really out of hand. I start to really pick apart people's intentions and I start to think, oh, you want me to think that you're cute and you're like quirky like that? No, I don't think that. No, I just think you're really calculated and I don't know and I don't know. <laughs> it's such a dangerous game, this YouTube thing. I was watching a lot of uh, Shane Dawson's most recent series on Jake Paul, which uh, if you don't know anything about this, then, you know, save yourself the time and hassle. It's just a docu-series. It's, um, but I was watching one of the things that really stood out to me in saying that uh, people that post videos on YouTube are attention seekers, at, you know, by the very definition. You know, people want people to watch their videos. They want them to get involved and they want them to like it and they want them to engage with it. And I'm sitting here trying to tell myself, like, is that true? Like, am I an attention seeker? I know I've been told, like, I'm the very definition of a Leo, which makes me feel like maybe there's some truth to that. <laughs> and then I thought, no, well, by the very definition, I guess that is true. I guess we all are out here seeking attention. And I'm just think I'm going to own it a little bit. <laughs> uh, it's not my main goal though. I think uh, obviously my main mission is just to share and I, I'm not so worried about uh, who gets what out of it. I don't need to be liked for it and I don't need to receive any praise for it. I would just like to know that it is helping someone but I do believe they were more uh, insinuating that people that had lots of uh, like vlog type channels that kind of documented their life on YouTube, that that was very attention seeking. Just the thought that you believe your life is worth watching by millions of people, but I can't fault them. I mean, it truly is. And here I am on YouTube watching these videos. Like it would be so hypocritical of me to say, well, that's, that's bad. You shouldn't do that when I'm literally feeding into it. <laughs> Um, either way, I thought it was an interesting discussion. I actually have zero, uh, like, well, next to zero opinions about it. I, uh, I do think it is uh, something that, I think it, there's a lot of validity to that statement, but I haven't really dissected it, nor do I think I even really care to revisit it. I just thought it was interesting. Um, I think YouTube is a funny thing. I like that it is there, and I think when it crashed, I really really understood how much I rely on it. <laughs> it hasn't crashed since I've been on there, or not that I knew about, so that was the first time where I got a real glimpse into um, not only obviously relying on it for, like, you know, my business and, and sharing content, but I actually watch a lot of YouTube. I watch more YouTube than I watch television, and I get more involved in, like, Shane Dawson series than I do in some of the new fall lineup series on TV. Don't get me wrong, still love my telly, but I do get really into the YouTube vortex and it actually became a part of my routine to fall asleep. Um, I like can just put on YouTube videos on the couch and take a nap because you know, two minutes into watching one of my favorite creators who I know is very um, soothing or, uh, it's so funny. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'll totally tell you who it is. Um, Nail Career Education. If you've ever watched this channel, I don't know what it is, but Susie just makes me so happy. And she literally, like, I put Susie on to take a nap. I put Susie on when I'm just chilling out, having some lunch, and I just want some company. There's something about Susie at Nail Career Education that I just really enjoy. And I just, I, there, there's something so methodical about the process of her putting on gel nails or acrylic nails. I just get so into it and I'm not the only one. I was telling Stella about it the other day and she was really into it as well. So, um, she has a large following too, Susie. She's a Canadian lady and, um, and just really super sweet and just does nails and she's, uh, you know, she's in nail career education. That's, that's her channel and that's what she does. She educates nail artists on how to do certain things. At this point, I've watched so many of them. I do believe I could do a full set of acrylics. So, uh, any takers? <laughs> could you imagine? I'm, my next 10 Inktober pieces will be done on acrylic nails. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past me. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I, I do really rely on YouTube and I watch it a lot, but it's such a funny thing to me. I, I honestly, it's like, do we even remember life before mobile phones? I'm so glad I was a kid at that point and I really didn't care to have a mobile phone uh, or social media. I feel like I really got the most out of that childhood experience. I, uh, I don't know what kids do now, but I'm super uh, curious to see what this next generation turns out like. <laughs> don't hold it against me if you're one of those kids and you're growing up and you're watching this 20 years from now. Please take care of me. Um, no. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to filming that uh, Patreon video. Hope you have a great day. I'll be back again tomorrow. Bye.